Now, as we saw in the previous video, automatic mapping, while nice, isn't exactly ideal for texturing. So what we're going to take a look at now is using planar mapping with cut and unfold. So first, let's go up here, edit UVs, open our UV texture editor, and here's the sore that we've already automatic mapped. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ball, for instance. Coming in on the ball, we can see in the UV texture editor that the ball has been split along with the hilt. And that's not exactly going to be ideal for texturing it. So we're going to go ahead and break this ball off of the hilt. Right click, go ahead and go to faces and kind of get a good angle here. And we're going to select the top faces of our box. Remember this ball that we created was a box. And I can press F on my keyboard to kind of focus and get a better rotation to move around it. So I'm going to make sure that I just got those faces on the very top of it, and I'm going to select the faces on the very bottom of it. Again, I'm treating this much like I would treat a box because that's how we made this ball. We made this ball out of a box. So I'm grabbing the top of the box, and I'm grabbing the bottom of the box. And I'm going to go ahead and planar map this based on the angle that it's going to take a best picture from. So the best projection would be from the Y. And you can always figure that out by looking in your lower left hand corner and you can see that Y is the angle that's dead center. So if I were to wanted to take a picture from the Z, a Z would be the best angle. But again, that wouldn't be a very good picture because it would lay it out very flat. And that's not what we're looking for. It would actually look like this over here in our UV texture. And we don't want that. We want it to look like this a round circle in our UV texture. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go up to Create UVs, open up Planar Mapping, and let's select our options for Planar Mapping. Now with the Planar Mapping options open, let's go ahead and set our fit projection to the bounding box, and we're going to select that we want to project from the Y axis. Because as we can see in our lower left-hand corner, it's the Y axis. That's the projection we want to take. We want to keep the image width and height ratio the same so it doesn't try to stretch this in our UV map. And as soon as you have that all set up, go ahead and click Project. And you can see if we zoom out, it's stretched this whole thing out to the entire size of our image, but now it's nice and flat. There's no stretching and they're all together. So let's go ahead and drag this off to the side, just get it out of the way. And we're going to right click, select shell, and we're going to click one of the shells and press W and then just drag it up. So that way we separate it because they were overlaying on top of each other, the top and the bottom were. Now, one thing you can immediately see is that this is a reddish color and this is a bluish color. That's because this is the back of the faces because we took a picture from the Y axis, which was directly above, and it caught these from behind. As you can see, it's taking a picture straight from the top down to the bottom. So these are backwards. So we need to flip these around. So go ahead and go up to Polygon, select this face, right click, go to Shell, select the face, go up to Polygons, and we're going to just click on flip and that'll flip it back around. So now it's facing the correct direction. Now we need to just go ahead and drag this up, move it out of the way. And we want to go ahead and get around the ball. Now we can do all this together. We can just go up to faces, click off of the object to deselect everything. And we just want to get all the faces going around the box. So I'm just going to marquee select that. And I'm going to hold down my control key, select the hilt, make sure nothing got selected on the hilt. I'm just kind of kind of press just going to press F and I'm going to kind of pan around this ball to make sure that I just got the ball. I'm just rotating around it and I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. As you can see, I accidentally missed this face here, so I want to select that. And if you're having a hard time seeing which faces that you have selected, you can always press 5 on your keyboard. That'll remove the texture and it'll make it a lot easier to see. Again, I can press 5. It'll kind of zoom in and then I can move around it a little better. And you can kind of just look around it, make sure you got everything. And I can see I've got all the faces going around the box and I'm gonna go ahead and project this. Now, which angle can I project from? Well, it kind of seems that this, if I look down here, I could project from the Z angle and I could also project from the X angle. So if I did from the Y, that wouldn't be very ideal because they would all be like just a circle and this just wouldn't be very ideal. What we want is more something like this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in the UV texture. We're going to cut it on one of these edges and then kind of just fold it out like you would just roll it out. So let's go ahead and project from the X axis. Go up here to create UVs, planar mapping, and select the options. 
then go ahead and select project from the X axis. I can see here X is in the middle. That's the one I want and just go ahead and click project. Now I'm going to drag this off to the side and I can see, uh Oh, you know, it's, it needs cut because it's showing it, but it's flat. If I were to press six to get an idea of what's happening here, it's stretching the texture. And this is something you definitely don't want because that'll be very hard to texture. So we need to unfold this. I'm going to just click off here off to the side, then right click, go to edges, select all the edges right here and here, because this is where I want to cut it. So I'm going to select these three. And with those three selected, I'll just come up here to this little scissor looking tool. And of course that does what it looks like it does. It separates the UVs along the selected edges. And you can see in the UV texture that I have those three edges selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. So now over here it's cut. This face is separated from this face. Over here, it's not separated. This is still merged together. So you don't have to worry about that. It's only affecting the UV itself. So now I'm going to right click. I'm going to select the UV and I'm going to select all the UV points of this face so I can just unfold this. And I'm just going to come up here, select polygons, go to unfold, and we're going to select the options for unfold. And we're going to go ahead and work for starters with the legacy unfolds. So you're probably set to unfold 3D. Just go ahead and select legacy. And a little bit later in the video, I'm going to show you the difference between the unfold 3D's results and the legacy unfold results. So go ahead and select legacy, come down here and select apply and go ahead and close this window, press W and I can just drag this off to the side. Now, one thing you'll notice already is that these aren't very uniform in size. If I were to R on my keyboard and scale this up, to kind of try to match the same size as those. That would be a little bit more identical. So now I can kind of, you know, just deselect the object and kind of right click, go to object mode and kind of just look around at it. And you can see there's really no texture stretching. It all looks very nice. You know, nothing's really stretching and that's what you're going for. Don't worry so much about how big these are that they're off to the side because what we're going to use after we have everything UV map, we're going to come up here and go to layout whenever we're ready. We're not ready yet, but we're going to use layout to uniformly scale everything inside here based on the object's size relative, like the size of the blade and the ball. We want to be uniform inside of our texture. So that way it'll all look uniform whenever we actually do texture it. One part won't look more high depth than another part. It'll all look like it belongs together. So now we're going to go ahead and go through the object and do that with every part. So let's go ahead and do this a few more times just so you can get the idea of it. We'll go ahead and do this handle here. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to faces. And I'm going to select just these faces here on the hilt of the sword. With just those faces selected, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create UVs, go to planar mapping, and I'm going to pull up my options. And I have to decide which angle do I want to project from. Well, I can see looking at it from here, this will be just fine. I can do it on the Z axis. So I'm just going to come over here, select Z, and go ahead and click project. Now I'm going to move this off to the side so I can get a better look at it. And again, as you can see, it's stretching. So we need to cut it again and then unfold it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pick one of the edges. So I'll click off of it and then right click, go to edge. And I'll go ahead and choose this one right here off to the side a little bit. So it's not directly in front or behind. It's just on the side of it. Come up here, cut it, right click on the object, go to UV, select all the UVs of the handle, then go up to polygons and select unfold. And there we have it. Now, if I go around the sword handle, select the sword, I'm just going to click off it, kind of go around the handle. And as you can see, it's all very uniform going around. And this is kind of how it's going to work with the entire object. We're just going to project on it, decide where we want to cut it, and then just unfold it. So I'll select the sword again. And that's kind of how it works. You select the faces, you project on a specific axis, and then you cut an edge and you unfold it. But that's not always how it's going to work. Sometimes you may run into an occurrence like this box here. If we were to try to select all the faces going around and also select the top, we would run into an issue. So in the next video, what we're going to take a look at, we can take multiple projections and in the UV editor, we can merge those projections together to sort of be quite a bit more manual. So in between this video and the next one, go ahead and find areas where you can simply do what we just did here with the handle and the ball and go ahead and also, you know, project this ball here. Go ahead and set that up and you can probably get this area here 
right here around this handle and you could probably go ahead and get it at the bottom here this bottom part here again I'll show you one more time with this one I would right click go to faces I would select all the faces going around I could probably do this easier from my front axis so I'll press spacebar and spacebar again select all these faces going right here on this bottom hilt I'll just come up here to project I'll press spacebar go back to this view again then I'll go ahead and project this so create UVs planar mapping select the options I'm going to go ahead and do the Z axis select the Z axis click project but I can see that I still need to cut an edge so I'm just going to come over here and cut the same edge that I did here so I'll right click go to edges select the edge then I'll come up here cut it then you can right click go ahead and select shell grab this shell press W and drag it out of the way so you can work with it better right click go to UVs select all the UVs then go up to polygons and unfold now here you can see that something odd has occurred the scaling of the polygon faces for our UV map on the left are a bit smaller than they are on the right so if we zoom in here to our object you can kind of see that there's a difference in scaling it just doesn't appear uniform here they're very big over here they're very small and that's not exactly what we're going for so what we want to do is have this be uniform in size clear around the object and that's where the unfold 3d comes in handy now with unfolding you can use the legacy unfold or you can use the unfold 3d and they both have different results and you'll have to play around by unfolding looking at the results of the texture see how it looks is it stretching how does it look in here is it going to be easier to texture so i'm just going to come up here i'm going to go to polygons go to unfold select the options and this time i'm going to choose unfold 3d but the first thing you want to uncheck is pack because if you have pack check that's going to pack all of these unfolds that you've done all of this uv mapping into the uv texture space and we don't want to do that we want to have our space kind of divided up while we work so go ahead and uncheck pack and then hit apply and close now i have to zoom in here pretty close because it actually does a kind of a pre-scaling so i can just hit r on my keyboard to scale it up and i'll just go ahead and scale this nice and big and fat so you can see exactly what we're working with and see that's a lot more uniform it's not one side isn't smaller than the other so again that's one of those things you have to play with and you have to decide which unfold you want to use. Do you want to use legacy unfold or unfold 3D? And a lot of times unfold 3D is going to wind up with a better result. I guess I'm kind of old school and I prefer to work with legacy as often as possible. And I use the unfold 3D when I run into an issue like that. So again, that's kind of user preference. So that's really the basics of UV mapping. Go ahead and work around the model using what we just covered in this tutorial and try to UV map as much of this object as you possibly can. Now, one of the things we are going to take a look at in the next video is this part of the sword right here where we have the hilt and the blade and we have this area. And I'll just go ahead and select, I'll come over here and select shell so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to select these faces right here. Don't worry so much about these because in the next video I'm going to show you how we can take multiple projection. We can project it from the X, Y, and Z and then we can piece it together in the UV texture editor. So all this, these planes will all be together and unfolded flat. And it'll just make it easier when we get into texturing to do so. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainproof.com.